who you are. My name is Oscar P. I'm with Open Bar Music. Welcome to Miami. Oscar, where are you from? And um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Originally from the island of Santo Domingo. Came to uh, the States when I was two years old. I've been living in New York City all my life. And uh, I, I got into uh, the music industry basically in the 90s. You know, if it get started, I went to Chicago in 1985. And I heard uh, all this great music that was happening over there. Uh, Marshall Jefferson's Move Your Body was one of the first records I heard. And I, it blew me away. It, it really, really blew me away. It was something innovative, different, not, didn't sound like anything happening in New York. Even though in New York City we did have guys like Boyd Jarvis, Timmy Regisford, with a similar style of sound, more R&B based. But, you know, the great debate. How long have you been a DJ? Since I was uh, 16 years old. How did you get into that? I got into it uh, living in Brooklyn for a couple of years. Uh, I lived in Williamsburg and there were a lot of DJs that lived in the projects near to where I lived. And uh, one of them was uh, one of the DJs from Houdini, a rap group, and we used to throw parties out in the street, we used to go to the parties, and that was the first time I've ever seen guys DJing on the, in the street. Do you remember your first record you bought? First record that I bought was Karen Young, Hot Shot. Because my mother used to play that around the house when she used to clean. Can you tell me a little bit about your label? Open Bar Music. Open Bar Music is uh, a result of us wanting to build our own brand name and control it 100%. Uh, it actually started here in Miami, the whole concept about two years ago, and we've been moving ever since. Uh, it's, it, since then, we've been doing parties in, uh, in Miami, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, LA, London, uh, Australia, uh, Holland. I mean, it's, it's just been taken off. And you're a digital, a digital uh, label, right? We have a company called Azuka Distribution. Shameless plug. And uh, we distribute about 28 labels, and uh, it was a very interesting technology, so I wanted to jump into it. So I got into it about four years ago. And um, what I liked about it was that it brings back uh, uh, the power back to the independents, the producers, the writers, uh, the artists. Uh, without having to suffer uh, the manufacturing costs of the music industry. Do you have, um, do you have anything to say um, to people who are against digital downloads and um, you know, only, only play vinyl? Uh, uh, not really, but I will say this. You can't escape technology. It's one thing history shows us is technology is unavoidable. Uh, cassette tape to the CD to the DAT to the DVD whatever the mp3 is right now is the medium of choice and uh, you can't escape it it's it's gonna be the medium for the young kids of today as well as uh, the people that have been around for for 10 20 years are gonna have to just roll with the ball and go with it do you have anything to say um, about MySpace? And uh, I mean, how, how do you uh, how do you promote yourself? How do you promote your label? We promote ourselves through our databases, our events, uh, MySpace. We're, we're, the social networks have a huge impact on what's going on today. Huge. Um, you're talking about being able to reach millions and millions of people on these sites, uh, send them links, promote, trade tracks with them, uh, and promote yourself as an artist. I think it's huge. Uh, you still need to have proper marketing and promotion, but these websites have allowed people to stay connected. That's what, that's really the important thing. People are connected through these sites. You know, I can talk to people in Australia, Japan, uh, trade music with them. Send they send me music. Do 
you have anything to say to um, you know any new artists that are interested in um, you know doing what you do? Do you have any advice on how you know how they can get their music out there? Okay, for the artists that are emerging right now, I would say learn about the technology, learn about what different things you can do to get your music out, because getting your music out is number one. The more people that hear your music, the more beneficial it's going to be down in the long run. And right now, where the digital age is about getting music out faster, stronger, quicker, people want their music now. That's what the internet is about. And the only way to do that is to share the music uh, and get it out there. Especially if you're a new artist, get your music out. Get you know, get your website up. Get get on MySpace. Get on Facebook. Get on Don't Stay In, and promote yourself. Do you have anything to say, um, you know, about people um, downloading music for free, like on LimeWire and things like that? I'm not a fan of LimeWire, but these sites have helped get my tracks into lots of people's hands that, that are that are not fans of the label. Um, I'm not I'm not a, approving of uh, the file sharing. Uh, but in our industry, in the dancing, uh, I think it's helped me because it's gotten my music out quicker to more people around the world. I mean we give away thousands of free tracks every month. It and honestly it doesn't really affect my sales. People say it does. I, I, I've analyzed statistically what is going on with, with uh, the free tracks, and I give away thousands of downloads every month, and my sales are the same. Can you, um, can you talk a little bit about how you used to pr produce music when you first started, what you used? Back in the day, we used to be at D&D Studio on 37th Street, two-inch tape, uh, you used to have to pay like $100 an hour to go produce a record. So you couldn't go to the studio and uh, fuck around. You have to you have your stuff down because it's $100 an hour. The clock is ticking. So you would have uh, a couple of hours to program your ideas. You know, Then you would have to come back and mix the record down, hire an engineer. It's a lot different today. Now I, put, I open up Reason in my laptop put a couple of things down, that's my idea. I mean, it's a whole other world. And again, the technology is, is what makes all this possible. Do you have any predictions um, what you see you know, coming, coming in the next uh, couple of years as far as um, you know, dance music? <laughs> cell phones is the next big thing. If you notice, every cell phone company, every carrier has a music department. They have an A&R guy. Uh, I predict that telephone companies are going to be buying record labels because they need content. They need content to sell their, their hardware. And the music is going to be software for these phones. That's the future. Um, I, think, I think people don't realize how fast it's coming. It's already here. And, and uh, the next couple of years, people are going to see. You're going to, right now, we're selling downloads for a dollar. It's going to go down to 75 cents, 50 cents a quarter. And you're going to be downloading tracks like that. And when you get your cell phone bill, it'll be on there, on your cell phone bill. What tracks you bought, and it's going to be part of you. It's going to become part of everyday life. And I'm going to give you an equivalent uh, of Avion bottled water. When, when the bottled water came on the scene, people were like, I'm not paying for water. It's the same thing. It, it's just in your face, in your face, in your face, and it becomes part of your daily routine. Now everybody drinks bottled water, and they're paying for it. It's the same thing. Once you get used to it, it's going to be pump part of your everyday routine, and more music is going to get out even more, because people are not going to think twice about buying music. They hear something they like, boom, 